I'm bringing you greetings today from the unceded and unsurrendered territory of the Musqueam people, on whose territory here at UBC, we have the great privilege to work, to live and to play. My name's Mary Ellen Terpella Fonder Akikwe. I'm the academic director of the Indian Residential School History and Dialogue Centre. Today, we are going to light up UBC Orange in honour of residential school survivors and their experience at the hands of these schools where they experienced incredible wrongs and human rights abuses. And at UBC, we need to understand their experience. We need to support them for the full truth to be heard. And we need to wear orange to show our solidarity and support. So join me, join all of the staff at the UBC Indian Residential School History and Dialogue Centre. In fact, all the staff, faculty and students across UBC who will be doing exactly that today, but who also will be bringing these teachings and learnings into our lives, into our studies and into our work every single day of the year. Thank you. UBC Okanagan is located on the traditional, ancestral and unceded territory of the Silks Okanagan Nation. I am struck by the deep significance of this acknowledgement and the particular meaning it holds for UBC's Okanagan campus. UBC was formally welcomed to this territory in 2005 by Silks Okanagan Nation chiefs, elders, and community members. And I think it's fair to say that our campus wouldn't exist as we know it today without the support and friendship of the Silks peoples. We are privileged to be on these lands and it's our responsibility to honor our host nation with the same support and partnership they have shown us. On the first National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, we have an opportunity to learn about the history and ongoing impacts of the residential school system and together act on the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report calls to action. In 2019, UBC Okanagan pledged to support Indigenous students, culture and scholarship through a declaration of five Truth and Reconciliation commitments. This week marks the second anniversary of this historic event, but our journey of Truth and Reconciliation does not end when we fulfill these commitments. Rather, we are at the beginning of a much longer path that we walk together. Thank you for walking beside me. While well, September 30th has been observed by many since 2013 as Orange Shirt Day. The official designation this year by the federal government of September 30th as the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation is especially significant. The National Day continues the movement to recognize the colonial legacy of residential schools and commit to the ongoing process of reconciliation in Canada. This movement is made vital by the recent discoveries of hundreds of unmarked graves at former residential schools. This year, as we pause on September 30th to honor residential school survivors, their families, and the missing children, we must reflect as individuals and as an institution on the things we can and should do every day to follow through on our commitments to advancing Indigenous human rights. Last year, UBC launched a comprehensive Indigenous strategic plan, setting out eight goals and 43 actions the university will collectively take to advance our vision of UBC as a global leader in the implementation of Indigenous peoples' human rights. Goal two of the Indigenous strategic plan, advocating for truth, underscores the importance of creating space for truth-telling and dialogue as necessary precursors to reconciliation. Goal eight, creating a holistic system of support, calls on us to provide exceptional and culturally supportive services for Indigenous students, faculty, staff, and communities. Working every day to realize these goals is one of the ways that we can, as a community, honor the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. But it's not the only way. I want to encourage every member of the UBC community to find your own ways to honor this important day, whether through personal reflection, 
deepening awareness through education, or by participating in events that honor and hold up residential school survivors and all First Nation, Métis, and Inuit people. Once again, thank you for participating in the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. It is an important day for you, the university, and for all of Canada. Welcome to Orange Shirt Day at the University of British Columbia Residential School, Indian Residential Schools Dialogue Centre. My name is Stephen Point. I'm the Chancellor of the University of British Columbia. My traditional name from the Stolo Nation is Balikwotol. I pause to think about how old this tradition has become, the Orange Shirt Day and how it started. And, and it began many years ago to commemorate those students who survived Indian residential schools, their experiences and everything that happened to them have, has been well documented in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And now this center has been an outlet for much of that information, making it available to the university and to anyone that may choose to learn more about what's happened. These schools began as a notion to assist Indigenous people in moving away from their traditional ways and becoming part of modern Western society. The government's idea, of course, was to assimilate Indians. And in some cases, their notion was to simply strip away their identity, culture, and language. Students attending these schools were beaten for speaking their own language, whipped sometimes with horse leather straps for trying to leave. It's a terrible, dark part of our Canadian history. But we can't forget it. We can't sweep it away. We can no longer ignore what's happened to Indigenous people in Canada. After colonialism, the impacts of newcomers coming, the churches and the government came for the children using the RCMP to forcibly remove many children. Those who survived that system that only recently came to closure in 1996 have some good stories, but mostly awful stories about being taken away from their parents how they were treated in these schools. It's important information. Anyone dealing with First Nations should have a better understanding of who Aboriginal people are, why Indigenous people still suffer today many of the social ills of third world countries high dropout rates, high tuberculosis rates, overrepresentation in jails and in the justice system. The good part about Orange Shirt Day is that we're commemorating survivors. We're remembering what they've gone through and we're celebrating that they've survived. As of late, however, the Orange Shirt Day has taken on a different meaning. In Kamloops this year, 215 unmarked graves of students was found, bringing in a new time, a new era of 
astonishing revelations coming from residential schools. And today, on September 30th, as the government has saw fit, to create a holiday around the ideas of truth and reconciliation. The Orange Shirt Day has come to mean also the commemoration not only of those who survived, but those who did not. I hope that those of you who are here and those who are listening can take some time to look through this center. It's an amazing place. It's not easy to process the information, no less have a better understanding, but I think that it's something that we all have to do. My parents went to residential school. I saw the pictures on the wall. Kokolitsa is where my mother went for several years. My dad went to Cuba Island. I have much to learn about their experiences. And I intend to spend some time here looking at their records. I welcome this chance and this opportunity to speak with you here at the university. I hope your time will prove fruitful and interesting at the same time. Thank you very much. Thank you.